Hi, this is David. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to uh, highlight an entire row based on a condition. So here, every row is yellow if it says James, and that is dynamic. So if this changes to James, that highlights in that color. If this changes to anything else, that unhighlights from that color. My name is David, and I'm going to have tons of videos on Excel, PowerPoint, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams, using Tech of the Workplace I'm covering on my channel. I love talking about the new stuff and the rarely talked about features. And this is the first video I'm making since I hit 10,000 subscribers. So thank you very much if you're a subscriber. If not, check out my other videos. You might enjoy this kind of stuff. So let's get started. Conditional formatting is this really cool feature that if you highlight a column, say you could go to conditional formatting and you could say highlight cell rules, text that contains. And I could say, for example, Sol will be in green and press OK. And I've got another video where I talk a lot about these conditional formatting things that are built in that I'll link to in the description below. Uh, this is dynamic, but this is only cell by cell. What we're going to look at in this video is how to do it for an entire row. Now to do that, you first need to select the cell and you do it like this. You go to conditional formatting and we're gonna to go to new rule. You have to write a custom formula. Use a formula to determine it. So here I'm going to say um, equals and then click in this cell equals and I'm going to say Daniela. Whenever you have text in a formula in Excel like this one, you need to start and end with speech marks, double quotation marks. Make sure you do that for text, but not for numbers or dates, as we'll see later on, like that. Make sure that it's spelled exactly right. Go to Format, choose what you want. So I'm going to choose, for example, this green color. And what is important is that here it's only testing uh, with dollar signs for A and dollar signs for five, so only this cell. But actually, we want to test the whole column. So we want to keep the dollar sign in front of A to lock that column. But we want the row to move up and down. So I'm going to backspace and remove the dollar sign before number five and press OK. And press OK again. And now it does work. And now we can see Daniela again like this. And it works just fine. Now let's do the next one. But in doing so, let me show you a couple of very, very important nuances that you have to know about. So let's say this is my active cell. And then I want to select the whole table. So I press Control A. And then I go to conditional formatting and, and then I decide to choose new rule and I go to use a formula and I say, for example, equals this cell. So I'm comparing units sold and I'm going to say greater than seven. I'm going to remove that dollar sign like we saw before. No speech marks because this is a number that's not text. And then go to a color, say blue and press OK. And now you should be highlighting everywhere where this is greater than seven in one color, but actually it's not working. Well, let's see what's actually happening. So this is greater than seven, this is, and this is as well, but uh, this one is, but this one is not. And also if this was to be an eight, then the one below becomes seven. So actually it's kind of offsetting it in a really strange way, whereby it's looking at the row above. So the reason why that's happening is because of the active cell that's selected. So when I started, I had this cell selected and then I compared it starting from this cell. Now when you press Control A, or if you have something like this selected, this is your active cell, but it really doesn't matter because you do the same things to all of the selected cells. If you press, for example, this cell and you press Control A and you were to say, make everything red text, then that happens to every cell, including the selected cell the active cell, but the active cell does not do anything different. The only time where I've seen something different happen is from conditional formatting. So make sure that you either, if you're going to do it this way, make sure that you either click on the top leftmost cell and select like that, or if you are going to use control A, then click in the top most cell in that column and then press control A like that. So for now, I'm going to remove that rule. So conditional formatting, manage rules and this one I'm going to delete the rule and press OK. So how are we going to get it working? We need to think about our active cell and our active cell needs to be the top most cell in the column. It actually could be in any column but in this case I'm just going to do it in this one and then press Control A to select them all then go to conditional formatting and choose uh, new rule and then we're going to choose use a cell to determine which format and we're going to say equals and then click in this cell and then greater than seven and then remove that five go to format and then i'm going to choose this blue 
press OK and OK again. And there you go. These are greater than seven. And then say if this one would say like 12, that's greater than seven, that would work. If this one would say 12, that would then work. I'll show you how you can choose the precedence of Daniela over that in a second. But that does kind of work. The only place where it has kind of broken, unfortunately, is that the headers have also gone blue. Um, this is kind of a bit of a nuance, but because alphabetically text comes after numbers, anything that is text is technically greater than that. So I could say, for example, equals um, wheel greater than the number 400, and this will return true because that's after it. And actually any number, no matter how big, is always bigger than any text, even R, A, 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 etc. So it's a bit of a nuance. So what we need to do is go to conditional formatting and manage rules. And then here for the numerical one, we can say applies to, and start, instead of starting on four, I can start on five, apply, and then you'll see that will go, press okay. And then I've kept my headers correctly. Um, now you can also do this with a cutoff cell like this. So for example, if I do this and then if I press control and then deselect these, uh, that's basically the only way to do it with this one. And then it will take the active cell to this uh, top leftmost one, but that one works as well. So I could do new rule and I could say equals this cell and then greater than or say less than this one and then remove number five here but keep the dollars with c and two and then let's do for example uh, another color like this purple one and then press ok it's a little bit ugly you can change the font color as well so i could have gone to manage rules and chosen edit rule and format and this could be the font color could be in color automatic white like that and this will be nicer easier on the eyes and then anything that's above that and this is dynamic so if this changes from 60 to 30 a lot fewer of them will be less than but if it changes to uh, 150 then more of them will be less than like that if you are doing it with dates then kind of take the same premise type the date in the cell because otherwise you need a date function and it gets much more complicated uh, for me i like doing dates like this three letters for the month rather than choosing one of these built-in ones. Because this way, regardless of whether you're in US that uses month, day, year, or everywhere else that uses day, month, year, you'll always be able to read it. So to do that, there's actually a shortcut, Control-Shift-3, that will do that for you. Um, it's actually much easier than that. Other than that, you need to go to more, more number formats if you don't want to use a shortcut. So I love Control-Shift-3 or, or Control-Hashtag. Um, if you're in the UK, then the hashtag is not above the three but control hashtag will work. All right, so how are we gonna do this one? So same control A and then this deselecting only works with Office 365 or 2021, but then uh, as long as the active cell is in the top most row, that's what it has to be. It, it can't be in any other row. Then go to conditional formatting, new rule, and then use a formula equals this is greater than this one, remove the dollar before five set another format in the fill color we're going to choose an orange one press ok and ok again like that it's a date that's earlier than everything else but if i do 18 now it's just those ones note that if i did have the white text the white text will still be showing because the uh the orange background overrules the purple background but the automatic text does not overrule anything else. So if I did want that to overrule it, I would have to go to manage rules and this one, edit rule and then format. And then I'd have to go to font and choose instead of automatic, choose black like this. So now's a good time to talk about prioritization. So if you go to conditional formatting and manage rules, you get all the rules that are happening to these cells. So let's say that I want, regardless of everything I want, Daniela to be in green. So there's two ways I could do that. I could either move it to the end like this and then press okay. Then everywhere with Diana, Daniela is in green regardless of if the other conditions are met. Or the other way to do it is I could say I want everything that is James to be in that color. I could still have that at the top and then I could take this stop if true 
and press OK. And now everything that is James is also yellow. Daniela is there because you can't have both of them overlapping. And they would take precedence over everything else. So um, one thing that is harder to do with this method is a contains. So usually you can do highlight cell rules, text that contains. And if something is wheel, then it could be wheel or it could be steering wheel. Casing doesn't matter. Then it will show up in that color. But you can't do that in as easy a way with conditional formatting for the whole row. Um, you need more elaborate formulas. Uh, notice as well that I did have these data bars. And the stop if true, what that will do is it will not do the data bars, whereas moving to the bottom, Daniela will keep them. So if you have something like this, and I love using data bars, like uh, what you do is you can select some cells and go to data bars and choose a color that you like like this. This is all very well and good, and this will then go um, on top of the other one. But in this cell, we did a stop if true. So if I do manage rules, uh, if I untick this and press apply, then I will get those back. So let's expand out my extra stuff, and let me show you some nuances. So if I were to copy this and paste it somewhere else, say over some data, control V, then my conditional formatting is gone, as well as all my other formatting, annoyingly, um, unless you use a feature called a table, which is really, really underused. I'll show you this in a second. So if you do that, then go to your conditional formatting and manage rules. And then all of these have been fragmented into two. Uh, this used to happen a lot more. Microsoft has recently put in an update to Excel in the last month or so at the time of making this video that this only happens if you actually have a break in cells. But, you know, for example, if I were to uh, add in a new row, that wouldn't happen anymore like it used to. Uh, what you can do if you really want this to happen is you can copy, of course, and paste special and paste values. Or what I usually do is values in number formats because it's very rare that I'll want my number formats to change. And then that will not overwrite it. And it will also keep your borders and your other things. But what I prefer to do is use this thing called a table. So if you are to cut and paste this, control X, control V, it keeps that. If you copy it though, it does overwrite it, strangely enough. But yeah, but if we cut and paste, control X, control V, then we can go to conditional formatting and manage rules. And these are still showing me kind of a clean path uh, before a lot of things like this used to break that showing you. Uh, so the benefits of using table are you can cut and paste and it works. Or the other benefit, which I really like, is that if you press Control A in a table, uh, that will not select the header row. So then you don't have to deselect the header row. So that works a lot better. All right. So I hope you enjoyed this video. My name is David Nyman. I have tons of videos on Excel, PowerPoint, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams, Power BI. I love posting videos about the new stuff. So check out my other videos. And if you want a copy of this workbook, then I'll leave a link to a website where you can download it from uh, in the description. Thanks for watching.